welcome back to the golf house if you've been here before if you're new welcome i'm so glad you're here i'm jenny and this is canuary canuary was created and organized by lisa over at sutton's days and includes several channels which i will list in the description box below for you and i'll link the playlist as well that means january 1st through the 30th are all canning recipes on the 31st, Lisa's gonna be doing a giveaway for a Presto pressure canner. To get a chance to win that pressure canner, you're gonna to wanna to watch everybody's video throughout January and comment, comment on everybody's video. And on January 31st, Lisa is going to pick a day. And the video that falls on that day in January, she'll use the random YouTube comment picker for. So exciting. I cannot wait to see what everybody is canning up. I love Canuary. And thank you, Lisa, for inviting me. It is always a good time, and I sure do appreciate it. Anyway, folks, today I am canning up some roasted red bell pepper in chicken soup. I love roasted red bell pepper soup, but I thought it would be yummy to add chicken in it so you can have some protein, and you can always add some roasted corn or some extra veg if you like. Anyway, let me show you how I'm doing it. First thing I've done, of course, is wash all my jars, lids, and rings. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my Sharpie, and I am going to put a mark on each one of my gaskets as I am using Harvest Guard lids today. The next thing I'm gonna do is get my canner ready. This includes looking through the petcock here to make sure I can see light so I know that it is not blocked and it is not blocked. On my All-American canner, about every couple uses, I need to take some Vaseline and I need to go around the edges. So that's what I do, just the edge here. I just kind of thin layer all the way around. I also do it to just the inside of my canner, just the lip here, very thin layer. The next thing I'm gonna do is of course fill my canner with water. I'm gonna drop in a rack. Put it on low and bring it to a simmer slowly. Let's get started on our veg. The next thing I'm going to do is turn my oven on. Three hundred seventy-five degrees. I am going to take five red bell peppers. I need to take the labels off. I did get these from the grocery store. I did not grow them. But I'm gonna use five bell peppers and I'm also gonna use a jar of roasted red bell peppers because I only have five. You can use all jarred bell peppers or you can use all fresh bell peppers, completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut up. So I'm taking all the seeds out. And then I am just going to cut them into large chunks. It doesn't really matter the size. We're going to cook these and they're going to end up pureed. So onto a cookie sheet they go. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on these and a little bit of kosher salt, probably a teaspoon. I'm also going to pepper them. I'm going to mix them up. And I'm going to put them in the oven at 375 degrees until they're done. How long that will be? I don't know yet. I'm guessing 15-ish 
minutes since I've cut them up. Now, you can do these the old fashioned way and roast them whole over an open flame, blister them, put them in a bag, seal it up, go ahead and peel them once they've cooled down. But this, the red pepper skins will actually get pretty soft. So after I roast them, I'm gonna grind them in a blender and just puree the whole thing. So I'm taking the easy route into the oven. We're gonna get our broth started. I'm gonna put this on a little bit of olive oil. You don't want to use too much fat, but you do need some fat here. We are going to cut up a couple of onions. These are also going to get pureed, so you don't have to be careful how you're cutting them. You know, large chunk is fine. If you've got two really large onions, use those. I've got three medium onions here. You can save your skins for onion broth or more broth. Pick them in your freezer. I got bags in bags full of onion skins. Okay, we're just gonna chop and drop. I am also going to put a tiny bit of kosher salt, probably a teaspoon into the onions. I like to add layers of flavor while I'm cooking. Black pepper. I have turned my onions onto a low. I want them cooked and tender and translucent. I don't want them brown. I have 14 cloves of garlic that I minced. Sounds like a lot of garlic, but that is basically two cloves per quart jar or a clove per pint if you wanted to can this in pints for a single serve. Stir that in and keep cooking. We want lots of flavor. Okay, in the meantime, we're gonna start cooking, uh, cooking, we're not gonna cook it. We're gonna cut up our raw chicken. I am going to do raw pack chicken in our soup because I think it cooks up better. If you wanna roast your chicken first and then pack it in there, feel free, you can do it however you like. I prefer mine raw packed. That way it kind of poaches in the soup. Rule of thumb per USDA complete guide to home canning. If you do not have this book, I will link the um, book in the description box below for you. I will also link the website in the description box below for you. But if you are a new canner, you need this book. I pretty much can everything according to just this book. Um, so if we're canning soups, we need soup mixture half full in the jar. So what I'm gonna do is fill each jar half full with chicken and the rest with broth. The broth is gonna contain all the pureed roasted bell pepper, garlic, onion, and we're gonna do some sun-dried, some, I can't speak, some sun-dried tomato. I have to go look to see if I have sun-dried tomatoes or if I just have pesto. Either one will work. They both will lend so much flavor. So I'm gonna check here in a second, right after I get my chicken cut up and put it in the jar. You'd think I'd be better prepared and have it all out, but. I kind of basically know what we're doing. I am going to cut these. I want my chicken in smaller chunks for soup. I am looking at doing um, Mm, half inch dices for my soup. Small. There are my jars of chicken. I went ahead and bleached up my area there. Here is what our onions and gar garlic are looking like. This is our roasted red bell pepper after 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and add it right in. These smell delicious. This 
So what we want to do is make a puree and make a super flavorful broth. Now I will tell you, this is actually my recipe. 90% of the recipes that I can and the recipes I make are mine that I write. The other 10% usually come from ball when I'm canning and I kind of change it up. Okay, I have one jar of roasted red bell peppers. This one is 12 ounces. Because I only had five peppers, I'm putting the jar in. I need a little bit more. It doesn't matter that they're not um, cut up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna puree those right in. I am gonna use about a half a jar of these sun-dried tomatoes. You can also use pesto so long as it doesn't have cheese in it. Um, you could do homemade pesto with no cheese in it. Um, just make sure that there's no cheese because you can't can that. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my tomatoes. You can also puree everything and leave these in chunks if you like, because they lend so much flavor. That was about four ounces of sun-dried tomatoes. Now we need to puree. I have water here. So we have seven quarts. We're gonna have to guesstimate how much broth we're gonna need because unfortunately there's no surefire way. Every time I do a ball recipe, the broth is always short. So not a big deal. I usually just try to make a little extra, just in case. So I am going to guesstimate that we're going to need about two cups of broth per quart. That's my rule of thumb. So I try to have at least 14 cups of broth, um, if not more. And I, like I said, I like to err on the side of caution and do a little bit extra. So I am going to shoot for 16 cups of broth here. I am going to add in about a cup of broth. You're going to want chicken broth. So whether you're using store-bought, home canned, whatever you like. Okay, pureed. This is measuring at about seven cups here. I am gonna turn my pot on and to this broth, which already smells amazing, I am going to add in about one tablespoon onion powder. Onion powder I love to add because it actually sweetens things up a tiny bit. I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And the only other seasoning I'm going to put in this is bay leaf. And I'm going to put about a quarter bay leaf per quart. Herbs tend to get a little bit stronger when you can them. As they sit, the herbs will get stronger. So be mindful. You can put any herb you want in there. Just be mindful how much you're putting in. Um, put in less than you normally would because it'll sit there and flavor it a lot more. So normally um, that much soup, I'd probably use a half a bay leaf. I'm gonna use a quarter in the quart. Now I've canned many years using a quarter bay leaf, leaf in each quart jar and I've never had it get overpowering, bitter, or awful. I've not had bay turn bitter. The only thing that I've ever gotten overpowered with was pepper actually canning it. I'm gonna taste this for salt. It probably does need more salt. If it does, I'm gonna put in a little bit of kosher salt. You can use canning salt, just not table salt. And I am out of garlic powder. If I had garlic powder, I would add about two teaspoons of garlic powder into this too. So when I write this recipe for you and I put it up, I'm going to include the two teaspoons of garlic powder. If you want to put red pepper flake in here, the red chili flake, you can totally do that. You can put cayenne pepper in here. Okay, I'm going to give it another taste. Make sure there is enough salt.
Perfect amount of salt, adding two more teaspoons. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and we're gonna start canning. All right, these are hot. The broth is nice and hot. It's about the consistency of tomato soup. If you open up a tomato soup and you add your water or your milk, that's the consistency. If you want it a little thicker, you can totally make it a little bit thicker. You just need to make sure um, that it's not too thick. I'm gonna pull these guys over here. And I'm actually gonna move you in a little closer so you can actually see it. Okay, I'm gonna be giving an inch head space here. bubble and stir as I go. I could be off on my measurements. This could very well need three cups of broth. Okay, I have some white vinegar I'm gonna be cleaning my rims with here. And then I have my bay leaves. I'm just going to break them in quarters and tuck them in. Just because I really do like that uh, bay flavor. Here are my lids. I am using Harvest Guard. I will put the Harvest Guard lid information in the description box below if you've never canned with them before. You do need to heat them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on here. I've got my little mark, my Sharpie mark on here so I know that I'm using them this time. Each time you put them, each time you use them, you're gonna wanna put a Sharpie mark on as you can reuse these, these bands about, these seals about 10 times. Ooh, that's hot. And then the rings. You hold your lid still, put your ring on, Fingertip tight, and then back off slightly. into the canner. The canner is simmering. I'm gonna go ahead and get my lid put on and get it clamped down. Okay, I'm gonna get it turned up. I like to bring it up between five and six, not completely on high. And when this starts to steam, and I'm talking steaming like a freight train, not a little steam, a lot of steam. You're gonna time that process 10 minutes. Then, Put on your little weight according to your altitude. I'm 15 pounds of pressure, so I will put it on 15 pounds of pressure. And then I'm gonna wait for my gauge to come up to that 15 pounds of pressure. As soon as it does, I'm gonna regulate my heat 
and turn my timer on for 90 minutes. These quarts, because I'm canning chicken, are gonna can for 90 minutes. If you wanna do these in pints, you're gonna can those for 75 minutes, and this is all according to the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. Now, if you look at soup, soup doesn't can as long, but because this is chicken chunks in a pepper sauce kind of thing, I'm gonna can it for the 90 minutes. Also, I wanna say, there are a lot of new canners joining us this Canuary, so I have given a lot more information on canning in this video, so don't be offended if you already know it and you're a seasoned canner. A lot of new canners don't know these things yet, and I just want to make sure that everybody cans safely. I am bringing them out. They smell so good. Okay, now because these are um, Golden Harvest and they're reusable, I need to tighten these down. Now, make sure if the jars are hissing, don't touch them. All tightened down I got six of them because I didn't have an I didn't make enough broth so when I do the recipe I will add um, two more cups to make sure that we get seven pints or seven quarts out of that recipe so when I write it I will add that that extra in he's gonna do a taste test for you here we go people this is the first taste test of the new year it is actually this is the roasted red pepper. I can't talk. Roasted can't red talk. bell pepper and chicken soup. But she sure can cook. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Really? Mm -hmm. That's good, huh? <laughs> so that. Mm -hmm. That's just the re the roasted looking amazing. red bell pepper broth. So all I did was heat it up and then I put, I drizzled a little bit of heavy cream over the top mm. of his and put a little spot of sour cream and then a little bit of cilantro. You Bam! Put, that cilantro mm -hmm. did it. A little that bit of fresh herb. Do it, it a, little <laughs> a little bit of fresh mm. herb on top, yum. And you can do a little bit of fresh lemon juice too. Hey! It's good, huh? <laughs> I would literally just, oh. I mean, I put this right on my mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm, that oh. it is good. Oh, my broth. goodness. It's roasted red bell pepper, onion, garlic, and chicken broth. Mm. Trust me, nothing to do with her being my wife and all. <laughs> but wow. <laughs> like, double wow. Did you want some? No, that one's for you. Okay. Woo! <laughs> all right, that's all there is to the roasted red bell pepper and chicken soup. Super delicious. It's gonna be nice to have this on my shelf at the ready for quick lunches and dinners. And you can change it up when you heat it up by adding extra things. Serve it with a little bit of fresh lemon juice on it. Uh, fresh chives, fresh basil, whatever you like. A little bit of creme fraiche, sour cream, heavy cream, crema, whatever you like. You give it a little Mexican flair by adding the cilantro. You could do roasted corn. You could do some roasted peppers right into the soup if you like to can those in there. You could add a little bit of heat, a little bit of red pepper flake. It's pretty darn versatile. Now remember, changing spice is not going to change your canning time. It's not going to change any of that. 
I will add in my disclaimer that this is not an approved recipe. Now, approved and unsafe are two different subjects. It hasn't been approved because I haven't gotten so popular that the USDA has picked up my recipes and decided to test them, so it is not approved because it has not been tested. But chicken is safe to can. Onions are safe to can. Garlic is safe to can. Chicken broth is safe to can. Red bell peppers are safe to can. So I feel pretty confident that I'm safe to can these things. When you are creating a recipe or you're making a soup, you are going to can it for the time allotted that takes the longest. In my case, chicken. Chicken takes the longest. So I'm canning this soup for chicken time, according to the USDA. Do your research and be safe, my friends. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like videos like these and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It does help me out and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes, including this one. Now I will put a link in the description box below for my recipe. I put them all on printable recipe cards for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.